Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Today I'm reviewing an HO scale 17,600 gallon corn syrup tank car from Atlas. This model is part of their master line. My car is decorated for Archer Daniels Midland with ADMX reporting marks. It represents a tank car in corn syrup service. The MSRP for this model is $46.95. I paid $30.99 for my car at modeltrainstuff.com. We'll start the model at 100 possible points. The car comes in a cardboard box with a clear plastic window on top. Inside, a two-piece plastic cradle protects the model. A thin sheet of flexible plastic gives a little more protection against scratches. This is a good box that should protect the model for storage and transport. I have a number of these cars from earlier runs that have been in their original boxes for years and they're still in great shape. I searched online and wasn't able to find a photo of this particular car, but I did find photos of other ADMX cars in the same number series. The model appears to be a very close match to the photos, with details and markings in the correct places. My car's build date stencil is April 1991, so it would be appropriate for the 1990s through the present. Actually, to be really technical, there's another tiny date stencil on the car from May 2001, so it really belongs in the 21st century. Since the stencil is so small, I'm willing to overlook that for my own 1990s era. Many of these cars are still in service, though some of the ADM cars have been repainted with a newer logo. The paint on the car is opaque and thin enough not to hide any detail. The separation lines between the overall black and the gray area around the roof hatch are sharp. The markings are crisp and all the tiny writing is legible with magnification, which is how I found the second date stencil. I really like that the blue and white ADM logo and lettering are in register, so that the white border around the blue is even. The car has a lot of good detail, including freestanding grab irons and placard holders. The corner stirrup steps and the side ladder rungs are slightly oversized in terms of thickness, a concession to durability. On the ends, the car has uncoupling levers and air hoses. These parts are somewhat flexible, so they should resist breakage. There are also more freestanding grab irons and wire end railings. The platforms are see-through. The B end has a nicely done brake wheel. On top, the car has the reporting mark stenciled on the B end. The hatch detail is good. The top railings are made of a flexible plastic that should stand up to moderate handling. Underneath, the car has nice freestanding brake detail, which is very visible on tank cars. The car's wheels are metal with standard HO tread width. Since tank car wheels are so visible, my personal preference would be for semi-scale wheels, which have a narrower tread profile. The model has plastic Accumate knuckle couplers on both ends. The coupler on the A end is low, so I'm taking five points. The coupler on the B end is at the correct height. Both coupler boxes have screwed on lids, so it would be easy to substitute Katie's or some other type of coupler if you prefer. All the wheels are engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. There is very little body wobble, meaning that the model won't shimmy while rolling down the track. The car weighs 3.9 ounces, which is very close to the 3.75 ounce NMRA recommended weight for a car of this length. Adding more weight would be tricky since there isn't any obvious way to access the interior of the tank body. The car is very free rolling. Let's see what we've got. The car had one low coupler, so I took five points in the standards and operation category. That leaves us with 95 out of 100 possible points, which would be an A on a report card. This is a nice model and it deserves a green signal. It's hard to believe that the tooling for these cars is over 15 years old now. I think they still hold up pretty well. If you're looking for some corn syrup tank cars for your layout, then I think you might like them.